This is a Rum Rant Supplemental, not a full episode today, it's just yeah. Jay and I, and uh, we will talk about this more later, but today we went to... Wait, 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 what? are you not going to do our intro? What do you mean our intro? What intro? Dude, we have you intro. I put that in post. Yeah. You don't remember that? You always say, my name is Rob. Yeah, but this is a supplemental, we're not... Okay. I said, this is Rob, we're here with Jay, it's just he and I today, that's all I have to say. You're ruining my bit, dude. You're ruining my bit. Oh, for fuck's sake. The bit where you don't do anything, that's your bit. Okay. Um, This is Rum Rats with Rob and Jay. This is Rob, (laughs) off to my right. Say your name. My name's Jay, and I have an announcement today. What's your announcement? I am running for... I'm not... That's where I play the theme music? Yes. Well, okay, but I'm, I put that in post, you moron. <laughs> oh, man. No, because we always hear it every time. No, we do not. We never hear it. How drunk are you? We never, <laughs> hear, drunk the th- <laughs> we never hear the theme music. I always put it in later. All right. I have an announcement. Okay, what's your announcement? I am running for whatever office that you see needs to be changed. President, city councilman, water bureaus, park and recreations, I don't care. I am officially putting my name in the hat to run for office. Are you serious? Totally serious. Just <laughs> You're going to run put, for office. Just put my name where that little blank spot is and uh, pass it on to your friends. People that vote, at least, hopefully. Oh my God. So yeah, I'm running for office. Okay, so do you have some kind of platform, some kind of reason, something you really want to change? Well, I do have a platform. Okay. My platform is I will make things up as I go along. It doesn't sound very official. <laughs> kind of sounds like Schwarzenegger, actually. <laughs> well, I think it's more or less that... I don't get to be, the chopper! I don't want to be dedicated towards anything, you know? You don't, you're not dedicated <laughs> to anything. <laughs> I'm right. not married I mean, to it. I mean, okay, <laughs> yes, I don't want to be dedicated. I, I don't want to run on a belief system that, you know, gay marriage is awesome or <laughs> everybody should smoke weed or whatever. Both because those things are good to me. They're both good. I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying they're good or, or, you know, we should outlaw something. I don't even know. I probably wouldn't outlaw anything. The point is, is that I would make a logical decision based upon the facts towards everything i wouldn't go with a belief system i wouldn't say that like the republican party is all about conservative and you know no abortions or whatever or the Dem- democratic party is let's give social care to everyone or, hmm. or whatever i would actually because i don't have a belief system i would actually make a good to use the word politician but i guess that's what i am i would actually make a good person to like make those decisions like all right what's your argument What's your argument? You're an idiot. Let's go with this guy. You know? Or, you know who you sound like? Or maybe you're not such an idiot, but let's tweak little things. You know, that's what I, like I said, I'll make it up as I go along. Mm. In a slightly <clears throat> passive way. You sound like Anakin Skywalker. Oh, fuck you. No, you do. I don't even know what that means. It means that when he was having this very conversation with Padme, his, if I guess, he had said, or she had said, what happens when the politics get involved, which is my question to you. I don't think you, I think you're underestimating the politics involved and the special interests involved. So your answer would be what? No. To simply say no. No, on the contrary, I would act, absolutely take the politics that's involved. But you can't accommodate everyone. Yeah, that's the whole point. That's where I would say, like, all right, there's something logical to this. There's something logical to this. All right, so the West Wing did an episode to where they. They did a day of, you know, basically an open day in door. the life of the president? Or? No, an open door policy. Yeah. Whatever idea or kooky thing that, that you had, and I guess this... Did we do that in the service? It seems like we did. No, this was this was way, way worse. Uh-huh. I guess they took it from a old policy from, like, Jefferson or, or someone way, way back when where they gave everybody a day to come in and give a spiel. And, like, one of their spiels was a group came in and said they want to you know, give solar power to everyone in the, in the United States. Hmm. The problem with that is they would have to cover the entire state of Arizona and half of Nevada with solar panels. And I'd be like, hey, that's a great idea. Just take the square states. But <laughs> <laughs> the square states. Thank you, George. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, that's a great idea. But 
let's minimize the territory. Let's let's look at who's going to install this. You know, and you know, you, you can go the funny route. Like you know, there's there's little pictures of, you know, if you talk about border control, you know, we should put up a big fence of border control. Well, who's gonna who's gonna build that? Well, who's gonna we, man that fence? Well, who's gonna build it? Yeah. I, was gonna, I was gonna go there. You know, and, and who's gonna build that? The illegal immigrants that we want to keep out. Well, you know, that's it's an old joke. Yeah. Right, but I mean, it's like. I'm not saying that's you know we shouldn't build a wall and we shouldn't shouldn't use illegal immigrants to build the wall you know like be like cheap labor you want a wall make it happen you yeah. know whatever <laughs> you know, okay. here's your fifty cents <laughs> now get on the other side of the wall <laughs> right everybody walk we're gonna do a door test we're gonna open this door and everybody walk through it why do we all have to walk through it it's a test just go ahead just walk 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 is it the last one <laughs> click but at the same time you know you can use that to be like all right you built the wall you get to stay on the side of the wall kind of like well, if you mm. if, if you join our military, you get earning your citizenship. You get you get citizenship for that's for a, for joining the military. That's a very See, veteran attitude. It's I don't, Starship Trooper said the same thing. No, What's the difference between yeah. a civilian and a citizen? No, no. no. Yeah, yeah they, they 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 took it they they took, took it to it to, extreme. To, to a little bit more extreme. But yeah. I mean, like, I would go both ways. I'd be like, all right, you get your wall, illegal immigrants. You get to build the wall, and then you not only get jobs. To stay here, you get experience, whatever, all you need, benefits, school, whatever, you know, and, and, and to stay. And you get to become a citizen. It's it's a win-win. You know, and I, I came up with this thing watching, and I love this movie. It, it's Dave. I don't know if oh, you've yeah. seen it. I've like seen it, 1992. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Kevin Klein. Yeah. Um, no, Kevin Klein was in and out No, Kevin Klein was Dave. It's Dave? Oh, yeah. you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Here's, Here's Dave. Dave. Right. I was and thinking, uh, Charles uh, Grodin was his accountant. I was thinking the one with the Annette, Annette Benning and whatever. Yeah, yeah he, uh, you know, Charles Grodin was his accountant, mm -hmm. like from like some, and he shows up like this like twenty year old, Vovo, you know, like oh, yeah. Yeah, just like and there. And there's two guys like drinking beer, like trying to figure out the budget, <laughs> you know, and he's cutting these ridiculous programs, and, and that's like, that's kind of my premise that I would do. I like, or like man, you know, of the year, you know, Williams, I don't think year. we need to spend. Two million dollars on telling people, you know, that they're depressed. Taking the whole military side out of it, mm. the only thing America has really ever been good at is beating up the other guy. That's not necessarily true. It, it is. It is. We are excellent at it. Yes, we we but it's we not we, the only we are we are excellent at it. I think we kind of stopped looking at it that way by what we get involved. This is getting way political, by the way. Yeah. You know. You've seen all all the memes and and gifs and whatever about Ugh. you know in World War Two we fought evil and now but even then it was political it really was it, it, it was you know we didn't get drug into it until we got hit well and now it's about oil and everything else but yeah. if you go back to even World War Two it was about oil you know if you well it, no I'm sorry resources. I'm sorry maybe not World War Two but World War One was definitely about oil because it was. The British, you know, had interest in Egypt and all that, and we were well, basically it was a similar concept. Yeah. yeah. So that whole "it's about oil" isn't new to like you know the 1990s or today or, or well, anything rather else. Rather than say oil, let's say it's about energy, or well, about resources, energy race, resources. Yeah. Um, you know, it it always has been. That's what that's what you're gonna fight for, and that, that's kind of why I, I thought you know that was kind of a bad analogy, you know. Um, well, there's an argument I've heard that do, do people fight over literally over resources, which is usually the excuse, or do they fight because that's just what we do as humans? I think if I you think take it's both, but it's totally both. And you can go the animal world. You know, you can look at packs of wolves. You know, they they fight over have territories. Have you watched Meerkat Manor? Yeah, I mean, holy you crap, know, it's, they have wars and shit. Yeah, I mean it's edited, but yeah, it, it is. You know, or the oh, there was a monkey one too. That hmm. yeah that. I, I've seen that one. Yeah. yeah, you know, just when a population grows too vast, then yeah, you're gonna have wars. It's it's you know every book is based you know not every book but there's a majority of books that are based on. It. I mean, if you look at the Hunger Games and which they say I would say is an extreme example, but only by degree. It's only we could totally be in that position. Right. At some point, um, what was it? Do you remember that show? Was it Dark Angel? When they postulated that our system collapsed and everybody else was better than us, you know, or not, I would say better, but what more well off than us? We were the third world suddenly. Yeah. And, well, there's also a speech. I think this show's called Newsroom, where he, you know, they're at a college campus and 
two people get it, or this girl gets up and says, why is America the, the greatest country? And one guy says, because we have freedom. And, and the main star just goes off on like, we're third in reading and all this. I mean, it's, it's a great freaking speech and I don't know how accurate it is. And we have like, consumption is what we have. Yeah, and we, we buy shit and we beat people up. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing since we started. Okay. We started with, with the English and we continued, you know. Watch with, Idiocracy, folks. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's a movie. You've seen it, Idiocracy. Have I? We've quoted it many times. It's about this guy that gets frozen in the army. He's kind of an idiot, but then 100 years later, he gets thawed by accident, and everyone else is dumber than him. I've seen that. You haven't seen Idiocracy? Motherfucker. Are you kidding? I have not seen You would love that movie. (laughs) Probably I can't believe you haven't seen it. It's called Idiocracy. It's called Idiocracy. Damn, I can't believe you haven't seen that. No. That's like one of my touchstones. But yes, vote for me. I think that's the whole... uh, I think that, that's the whole thing. Is like, yeah. I think you have to pick an office first before. Pick an office and then decide to run. And... I'd really, if I picked an office, senator would be would be the one that... State or federal? Federal. Totally okay. federal. Okay. So you think you're just going to step into a Senate seat? Is that what you're thinking? Those haven't been bought and paid for three generations ago? <laughs> Look. <laughs> vote for me. Vote for, <laughs> vote for you for what, though? That's what I'm looking for. Vote for me for yourselves <laughs> okay i think we're in a circular argument here we are and i'm totally this is my politician coming out i'm gonna i'm gonna totally circulate uh, like make you think wait what what did you just say uh shit, he is a politician fuck <laughs> he's like everyone else okay, jay's he says, arguing with himself like he's smeagol suddenly yeah he says nothing he says nothing yeah that's because i don't know anything vote, vote for, for me. me precious <laughs> vote for me because i don't know anything <laughs> there you uh, go no, yeah. that's the first honest <laughs> thing I've heard. Vote for me because I don't know shit. Oh, yeah. I, I, I use that all the time. As a, to, <laughs> even with my current job, I'm like, I don't know. That. I just oh, we make, all pretend. I just I just make it up as I go along. And that's, I, that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. Is that, ooh, you, know, you and I both know a lot of shit. But we we do. sure as hell don't know everything. No, and, and, and I keep... I keep Saying that all the time. I don't know shit about science. Shit. I know that. I make it up. I make decisions with the information that I have. Was it Bill and Ted, Socrates, <laughs> Socrates, Socrates Johnson? Socrates said the only true wisdom is knowing that you know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Jesus>. us, dude. <laughs> Very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if there's, I'll be a judge. I don't care. And you're put on county because there's nobody that ever runs against judges. Those are always like. There's only one name here. Throw my name in there. I may not be qualified, but throw my name. I'll, I'll well, it's an elected position, so technically, yes, you could get it even though you're not qualified. Yeah. I mean, people have won elections who are dead. I judge people <laughs> every day, all the time. See, now, here's the thing. Oh, uh, wait, thing is that different? I, <laughs> judging people like Solomon did. Solomon kind of looked at the situation. He was the one in charge. He's basically a dictator, really, right. by definition. And he would, like, one side and the other side and mesh them together until they realized one person was just wrong. Right. And that's kind of the way the military does it. Like, we kind of look at it and go, okay, here's this, here's this. We're going to squish it together because we got to get shit done. I don't fucking care about all your politics. <laughs> you're, that's where you're coming from. I can see it. Yes. Uh, but politics in the civilian world, on the other hand, actually play a much larger game. <sighs> and they play a little bit of a game in the military, as you and I know. Right. <sighs> yes. I was going to go a completely different, he was derailed. Different, different direction. His, his train of thought was derailed. Um, well, I was trying to keep this you know, kind of funny and lighthearted. But I'm finding it really amusing. I think I saw my, I, I think the point is, is that obviously we've said this a lot, a lot of times. I'm at a crossroads. But maybe I'll look into how to become a new ascent. Damn it. I got to live somewhere first. I think you have Just, to. You live, live here, you know that, right? Yeah, but I think you have to live somewhere like for a certain amount of time. You just can't move somewhere and say, Ooh, I, "Well, I don't know." Ask Hillary Clinton; she yeah. never lived in New York, that's, as far as I know. That's true. Same with, you know, <laughs> Barack Obama. I think he lived in Chicago for like a month and yeah. then became a senator or something. But I, I'm not rich enough to play that game. I, no, I can't. I can't have like five houses. I I could barely afford the one apartment that I have. Well, rich isn't enough though. Look at Donald Trump. Do you really think he's going to get the nomination? Oh man. By the way, I should preface all this. Usually. When we start recording, we haven't drank anything yet. We've been out tonight already. <laughs> just, just so it's, just, it's in here. We've I've been drinking somewhat heavily. You've been drinking a little tiny bit. I had to drive. <laughs> you had to drive, so you only had a little bit. But I've drank quite heavily. Right. So and plus we were in Nerdville. Right. So we'll talk about that later when Jeff's here. Uh, we we had a big convention we went to today. 
And Jeff's not here, so we'll talk about that some other time. <coughs> Thank you for not sneezing into the microphone, sir. <coughs> I'm ple- Oh, Gertie hates me. Hates him. You better, te- you better tell her sorry. I'm not kidding. Why? It's okay, Gertie. She, it's okay. She, oh, see, fine. she's upset. It'd be good. See, now. Oh, I know. See. Whatever. <laughs> she vote. hates sneezes. She hates him. Anyway. So, yeah, vote for me. That's my big announcement today. Vote for you. Vote for okay. me. Like, throw my name somewhere on your list. All right, well, let's go on to something a little bit more. Like I said, we were at a convention today. We won't talk about the convention itself until Jeff is here because we really, you know, we had a lot of fun. But Jeff was not involved in the after party. No. The convention was in Portland. It was the Rose City Comic Con. And we decided to come back up to Washington, where, of course, I live, and go to the Cinetopia, Brewatopia, or Brew, whatever it's called, and go to their Star Wars after party. There was a trivia contest and there were specials and I made Jay order Wookiee fingers at the bar and I made a big deal of it. Uh, but we ended up sitting at this table with a couple Mandalorian cosplayers from, uh, you know, Bubba Fett type, you know, cosplayers along with whoever they were with and then a couple Jedis at the end, the, the saber uh, type folks. We were sitting at the, kind of the same center island with them and we had a really good time. Of the, what would you say, 20 teams, we ended up number five. In the yes. trivia contest. Yes. Which is to say, I ended up number 4.5, <laughs> and Jay contributed a half a point. There was a music section. There was. I was able to actually... I Two know Princes that was a good pull, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was a good pull. We weren't sure about that one. I think we were the only ones in the entire bar. Oh, I know. That's, so, why, that's why you laughed when we said something. We're yeah, like, so... Yeah, Spit Doctor's wrong. So, yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> nobody else said Spin Doctor's nobody, wrong. Nobody knew that at all, like... <laughs> It was Spin Doctors, Two Princesses. Two princesses. And, and it, what it was, was it was Chewbacca singing a song. We had to figure out what it was. So it was rah, 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 with the music playing in the right. background, like karaoke. So we were like, that's Spin Doctors. Which song is that? I'm like, I think it's Two Princes. Yeah, it's probably yeah, it Nobody is. else knows this. <laughs> Nobody else in this room was born when that <laughs> song came out. <laughs> yeah, so mm-hmm. when he announced that the that was the actual answer, we kind of went nuts. Mm. like, And we were totally... Actually, he laughed too because he's he was our age too. Yeah, he was. He laughed. He thought that was funny. Yeah. So <laughs> I rocked that round. Yes, you did. But out of about fifteen to twenty teams, we, we were the only ones got that got a perfect score on that. On that one. On that in that round. Well, yeah. no, we missed that one. We missed one because I got the Beatles, but not the song. Right. So we did miss like one point out of that one. But like everybody else, slaughtered that. Like they didn't know who Otis Redding was and and all kinds of stuff. And I'm actually a little disappointed we got five. I, thought, I was hoping for maybe three, because uh, I knew the two we were sitting with were like way more. Like yeah, the Jedi's those, and those the guys. Mandalorians. Holy crap. Plus, it was just Jay and I, and Jay could only contribute to the music part. I was doing everything else. Yes. Except for logic questions. Like, occasionally Jay and I would go logic, and so far they all were wrong, because the logic of... I, st- I still think... Okay, so the question was, from the camera view... In the scene in Moss Eisley where Han shot first, as we all know, but in the remake where he shot second, which way did his head turn in reference to the camera? Meaning you were looking at the screen, which way did his head turn? Yeah. He went left. He went his left. No, he went his right. I think I think. And we he went the camera's left. I remember that now because we got it wrong. <sighs> we logically, because you and I are both right-handed, mm-hmm. we said, because we're used to carrying pistols at that low angle mm-hmm. that he was, if we pulled our pistol, we would have leaned to our left. So we could pull our pistol out. Oh, you know what? I'm, look, I'm look looking at it. Look at it backwards. No, no, no. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about it. I think Harrison Ford's left-handed. That but his could pistol be... was on his right. In the camera, in the scene, his pistol is on his right. I know it. Believe me, I know that scene. It is. It's on his right. Yeah. In which case, he would have went left. It, had he been us. Because if I pull a weapon from my right, I'm going to lean left, so my elbow can come up. Gee, you thought this. This was exactly right. what you were saying. Yeah. So my elbow would come up a little bit and move. If I moved right, then I'm squinching my elbow like this. All right. Not that you can see this on the air. But we thought that name was the other way around. Because he naturally... Here's a good example. Remember Firebirds? Not the, the, the puppets, but uh, Nick Cage and Tommy Lee Jones did the Top Gun mm-hmm. of Apaches. And he was right-handed but left-eye dominant, and they made that whole big deal about that. Yeah, it, That's kind of what I'm talking about. We, you and I are both right-handed. We would pull the weapon from our right, we would lean to the left. Right. So we could clear our holster. But a person, you're right, a person who has a weapon on the right but is left-handed might lean into it because they naturally do this. 
Now, granted, it's a CGI effect. We should have considered that because it's not an actual movement. What Lucas did is digitally move Harrison's head to one side so the shot can hit on the wall behind him, which uh. is fucking stupid. It's the worst part of the special edition. Yeah, I never saw the, the special editions or the remakes or anything. So I, I was I trying to do it from memory, and Jay was trying to do it from logic, and I couldn't remember accurately, so I went with Jay's logic, and we were wrong. <laughs> because your logic was sound. Your logic right. was exactly right. Yeah. But the, you got to take into account the digital reference. He moved the other way because that's the only way they could move him in the computer. Hmm. So you and I overthought it. As well. I didn't overthink it. I just like, no, he went Because I, I, I remember the way he was sitting. Yeah. You know, he's kind of sitting on his left arm. Well, he had one arm, like, above his head. Yeah. He was picking at the, he, at the he, concrete he had his him. He had his right right arm above his head. No, it was his left arm. Because he had his right arm unlocking his pistol. Right. Okay. So, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So he had his left arm above his head, and he's picking at the plaster, which is supposed to be stone, but it's plaster, behind his head. Okay. We're actually both... Mimicking both of our yeah, arms. Yeah, both are, our arms are up and we're poking are, uh, the wall behind Yeah, poking us. the wall. I'm actually hitting one of the pictures behind me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're, we're miming this out. I'd have to see the scene where... The only way that I'm going to believe that is if we pull up the scene and I see... I don't even need to see. I, you can pull up any scene. I just need to see which side he wears his gun. It's on the right. I know it's on the right. Is it on the right? It's absolutely on the right because of the way the camera's sitting. The camera is literally sitting with Greedo on my right and Han Solo on my left, which means his weapon is on his right side. Believe you and I both wore that same not right. that same holster in that on that spot on so, the leg. It's a low slung. So yeah, I'm lo- I'm looking holster. at a picture right right now, and his weapon is holstered on the right. Yeah. But so because of CGI. They moved his head the other way, which naturally would not have happened. Right. He would okay. have moved the other way. Yeah. To, okay. Because here's you cover. You pull this way, and you, um, you can't see me on here, but I'm pulling to the left. I'm ducking, and I'm pulling the weapon out right. from the table or above it or under it. Either way, right. you would still move this way because so you can move. Yeah. So logically, I was correct. Yeah, like, you were. Absolutely. Okay. Logically, you were correct. CGI-wise or Lucas-wise, you were wrong. So Lucas fucked up. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Okay, every single thing he did on that, every single fucking addition he did from fucking either the 98 VHS or the 2004 DVD is fucking wrong. It's just right. wrong. Leave it alone. Oh, that by the way. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. But to I'm our just... normal subject, though, on our Facebook page, we have posted a notice that Disney is going to release the original trilogy on Blu-ray. Okay. Like the original unaltered trilogy. I hope they clean it up because it looks pretty bad. <laughs> I hope they don't. And here's the thing: is that we we watched Fletch we earlier did today. We watched in between the Comic Con and going to the after party. We yeah, sat around yeah, and we, watched Fletch. Right, ate, ate dinner, took a nap, whatever. Yeah. So his first bitch was it doesn't look right. And we we're watching it on Netflix, and I have a high def 4K TV, right. and it looked pretty good. You know, I was it, kind of actually impressed. And it, Jason, it, no, it doesn't look right. It should look more grainy than that. It should. You know, like these are the movies that. You know, if a movie was made in the 80s, it should show that if a movie we was made... We watched it on VHS or on local KPT Channel 12. Right. On the air. Right. Yeah, it's Analog. But that's that's the way the movies were made. They weren't yeah. made with all this, you know, enhanced digital things. Got, and, no, actually, that's not and, what they were made. They were made for film on the theater screen. When they translated to VHS and TV, but that's even, what they But even like theater we screens were not as good or clear as well, no. what we have nowadays. With well, projectors, I would yeah, say. Yeah, on, no, 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 on no. our TV. That's so right. there is, every movie, there's cleaning up. There's, yeah. you know, they, they release, in, uh, that's why they haven't released every movie on Blu-ray or, you know, whatever, because it fucking takes time, I imagine. There's a lot of movies you probably can't, can't find. So I doubt Daryl's on Blu-ray. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Maybe even Little Monsters or... Oh, that was another conversation we had. But we better wait for Jeff yeah. on that one. Okay, Jeff, he pussied out again. Of course he had to work, but yeah. still he's a pussy. Okay, so I'm looking at, at King Kong. Like a poster of King Kong. Oh, the original, yeah. Yeah, the, the original. old 19-whatever, 30-something. Right. That, the original is choppy. Very. It was high-tech at the time. It, it was, but... Watching that choppiness versus like you could digitize that and everything else and make it all smooth, it doesn't make it. And I'm not saying like artist, and I'm not saying keep you know originality rules or whatever, but not necessarily. But it's the choppiness that makes that movie scary. 
you could see what's going on. You could see. I think it makes it nostalgic more than scary, but okay. Exactly. No, that that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. It's you could put your place in that time. Was like, oh, exactly. And, you and remember that. Well, yeah. I don't remember that. I wasn't well, born but you remember in, watching in, in it the first time. When we watched it the first time. Special effects weren't much better than that. No, but a good example is Clash of the Titans. Yeah. That was our lifetime. Yeah, right. Choppiness, you know, a little bit. Like, what the hell is going on? If you're a true movie lover, you immerse yourself in the movie and the way that... As and, it was intended, as it was done at the time. Yes, and you can see the action and, and, and the suspense and, and everything else. You don't bitch about, like, well, they did this and they did that and da-da-da. It doesn't matter. You're watching the movie for... And that's what I say about, like, anything. is like, I, you know, I enjoy movies for what they are. It's, you know, like the Star Trek. Like, it was two hours of enter- entertainment. Like, it was, you know, like, I take it for what it is versus... You know, fanboy or whatever. You know, like fanboys do tend to get a little bit yeah tired. Uh, so, but I will say this though: I've said many times, my favorite restoration of any the my science fiction fantasies whatever is the original Star Trek television series. That's my favorite restoration. They cleaned it up. They redid all the special effects that needed to be redone. Some of them were good enough, but they redid most of them. But they made them look like they could have come out in 1967 when it came out. They made it look seamless and flawless. And they did a really good job with redoing the movies as well. Those were the best restorations I've seen. And when those happened, my this is so stupid, my first thought was Clash of the Titans. Because I would love to see Clash of the Titans with exactly the same characters, meaning the claymation right. stop motion characters, but smoother. I would love to have seen them move smoother. But you're absolutely right. People love that jerky because it reminds you of when you first watched it. Well, but I would, for me, I would love to see it put out on Blu-ray with the version unaltered and the version altered. Well, I think that's why you get the remakes versus, you know. Oh, of, fucking. Oh. And then, but, I mean. You Clash Titan, another good example. That remake sucks. Right. But you get remakes versus the, the cleaning it up because you get, like, all right, let's just. Instead of cleaning it up, let's just remake it. And then, I don't know, budget-wise, which one takes more, which one takes less. And Well, budget-wise, then remake would take more, but they think they make more money. For well, them. yeah, there's got to be an interest in, you know, Clash of the Titans to be cleaned up. I mean, it's not like... It's not like Back to the Future. Okay, we're, we're going to clean up Back... I'm just... Uh, yeah, totally I'm getting... I'm, get, I'm getting the, the, from me. I'm getting the look, but... That movie's perfect. But I, I just... I threw that out there because... It is a classic. It is perfect. It is. For us, it's a classic. Um, Absolutely, yeah. You know, it, it, is, it is what it is. So, You know what the enhancement I would look for, though? If somebody were to come up 10 years from now, we're in our 50s, say, mm-hmm. for example, and they were like, hey, we've redone Back to the Future in a holodeck-style 3D environment. You can walk through Back to the Future. I would be all fucking over that shit. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's an enhancement that would make sense mm-hmm. to me. So I wouldn't say never, right. but... As long as you, like the, the, I put on the uh, Facebook the other day, they're making a Transformers cartoon or they're proposing a Transformers cartoon that's more loyal to the original source material, which I think they've already made that perfect movie, so why the fuck would they do that again? But it, it, still, I'm excited about it because it, to me that seems like a, a logical progression. I love the first Michael Bay film. After that, it went to shit. But the first Michael Bay film I actually really like, like mostly because of when we went to see it. It was you, me... Yep. And we were in the theater, and literally five minutes in, when the helicopter lands and the guys all run around it, I remember turning to you and and go, excuse me, <laughs> am I to assume that the first fuckers who are going to die in this movie are security forces? <laughs> Just so everybody knows, we've right. talked about military before, we were all security forces right. in the Air Force. And the first mo- motherfuckers, the first morons that are going to die in this movie are SFs. And you and me both turned to me and go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we laughed our asses off for the rest of the movie because it was funny. It, it was. was fun. It was. That movie was really good. I enjoyed the second one, too. Yeah. I had a few great moments with the second one because of Leonard Nimoy. And, and mm-hmm. seeing, seeing Leonard Nimoy, Peter Cullen, and Frank Welker all in the same scene was really impressive. Like, because Lemoy played The Fallen, didn't he? Was that the second one or the third one? That was the second one. I get him confused because I don't care. I don't That's own him. That's the second one. Yeah. So to see the yeah. scene between Peter Cullen and Leonard Nimoy was very moving for me because those are two voices in my childhood that are very eternal to me. Peter Cullen being Optimus Prime, of course. 
and Nimoy, obviously. Which, of course, leans back to Galvatron, which... Yeah, I was going to say, that's the first one, yeah, too. Yeah, he was the voice of the Fallen in the Transformers yeah. Michael Bay one. So that was a really moving scene. But other than that, eh. Yeah. Eh, I didn't care. Megan Fox, eh. I saw her tummy in the first one, I give a shit. <laughs> and then, of course, the chick on the third one was hot as fuck. But she was pointless. Like, right. she didn't serve any purpose at all. Well, she was at Decepticon, so they... No, that was the other chick. That was the Pretender, which is a really right. cool pull. And people who really know Transformers looked at that and went, that's a fucking Pretender. And it was, I was like, what? The kids were like, what's that mean? <laughs> the Terminator? No, fucker. The, the third one was was horrible. And the fourth one was just pure, again, because I'm not a purist, I can look it's at it. It's Transformer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 can look at, I can look at Mark Wahlberg. And I love like, Mark Wahlberg. It's just, I really do. It entertained, it entertained me thoroughly. Like, he has a teenage daughter. He's like The going... best character in that movie they killed one third in was the kid from um, Moose or whatever. The fucking kid from uh, shit. I don't remember his name. He's been in a bunch of movies. Yeah. Like, she's out of my league and a bunch right. of other things. He, they killed him like halfway, third of the way through. I'm like, he was the best character in the whole fucking yeah. film. But I mean, he, I didn't take it, you know, like, it was part of the storyline, but I'm like, All right, dude, it's just two hours of entertainment. Like, I know it's not, I know people are going to be disappointed. I wasn't entertained, though. I wasn't entertained as like, this is a Transformers movie. I was entertained just simply like, this is just the goofy shit. Yeah, the, the the goofy. You know, he's I a father. T- I could. That's the part I could have done without, though. That's the part that bugged me. I think that's. I think that's kind of what made the movie was him. I'm a father. I'm a you know a loser who can't mechanic. You know whatever. See, because because it was hokey. It, see, for me though, that was once like, once that started, I got in that mindset to where all right, I have lost all respect for the actual you know history of Transformers and, and whatever. And well, this you is set just it aside. And and this of... is just a alien movie or, you know, an alien invades kinda of like a Mars Attacks. But see now but, Mars Attacks that was a different issue. But but not it's it's not a serious movie. It's not a serious story. It's not a serious anything. It's just a guy running around trying to save the world. It's a Bruce Willis. You know. And that's all that is. Now that, like, now that Bruce Willis <laughs> technically doesn't really uh, exist as Bruce Willis anymore. <laughs> Wait, what? Well, he's still a Bruce Willis, but he's not right. Like we've kind of like lost our his luster a little bit. Oh, yeah, he should not have done that last Die Hard movie. Nobody should have done that last or, Die, uh, Die Hard movie. A handful of other films. I guess he's been fired from the latest Woody Allen movie. I mean, yeah. how do you get fired from a Woody Allen movie? Yeah. All you have to do is like do what he says. Like Woody Allen, he's not a overbearing personality, but he's making his fucking movie. If you sign on to do Woody Allen movie. I'm going to walk in there with my fucking heart in my hand and go, tell me what to do, and well, I will fucking do it. But Bruce walks in there like a dick. <laughs> well, I think he had the same problem with the Expendables, is where oh, yeah. Bruce Willis wasn't the main Stallone star. Stallone was like, uh, this is my movie, bitch. Yeah, you know, egos get involved, and, you know, and mm-hmm. fuck, I, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't read. He's the, greedy and lazy. I didn't, I didn't read the interweaves about you know, what the hell was going on during all that and why they only limited or didn't want him back or whatever. I will I say, care. though, it was really awesome to see Bruce Willis, Stallone, and Schwarzenegger in the same action scene. Well, yeah. That was one of the fucking coolest things I've ever seen yeah, in my life. Yeah, I mean, well, The Expendables is just... I think, I because it, because it's franchise. just... It's I just, really do. I do. I, I love all three. And of them. Ronda Rousey made the third one, man. She The third one's not that good, but she was awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't want to, because I love the the franchise for I what it too. is. I do too. I don't want to criticize like like, okay, this plot is way too easy. Yeah, the, it phoned it in. Kinda. The 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 new Expendables, if you will, yeah, not not very not very good actors or actresses. Yeah, yeah. I, I would watch but, Rousey do anything, man. I fucking but but at the same time, like oh, I'm still enjoying this because. Yeah. It's Sylvester Sloan, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, it's Bruce Willis, it's fucking... Well, Bruce wasn't in the third one. Yeah, he was. Was he? Yeah, he was. I, I didn't think he was. I thought they cut him out after the second one. And they brought in uh, Harrison Ford. No, I think he... Well, no. I think they... I think he no, was... No, he got caught after... He got cut after the second one and they brought in Harrison Ford to take his place. Because it, Stallone says, where's Church? And Church was I thought Bruce. That, I thought he was... No, I thought he made an appearance at the end. At the very end. I have to watch it again. At the airport. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter. It was just... It's a bunch of guys. But you, see, Harrison Ford was crazy uh, too. Like, yeah, what the fuck? But at the same time, like Harrison, dude, and Kelsey Grammer, motherfucker. <laughs> like, this is not an action star. Of course, he was the Beast. He was awesome as the Beast. Right. Now he's. We'll, we'll we'll come back to Kelsey Grammer. Oh. 
Harrison Ford, Kelsey. that was the worst acting job I'd ever seen in my entire life. With Harrison? The Harrison Ford was like the worst you know acting what? job. But he kind of scares like, me as Han Solo a little bit. It kind of worries me a little bit. Yeah, but he was like... He was having fun. You could tell, like, he's having fun, but he wasn't, like, taking it seriously. Like, he's like, fly a helicopter. Uh, like, all right, whatever. It's like, not the Falcon? Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I get to fly the Falcon next month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's probably what was yeah. going on. Like, yeah, yeah show up. Yeah. He probably didn't even know the lines yeah, at I'll all. deliver yeah. my line. You know, do I have land? This is the Falcon. <laughs> Punch it, Chewie. Wrong film. <laughs> wrong, wrong film, Harry. But what? Wrong film, Harry. <laughs> that, was the, fucking... that was the worst... I wouldn't say the worst Harrison... Ford performance ever, but that mm. was you could tell like he just here's a question. What would be the worst Harrison Ford film ever? The worst <sighs> performance? I could probably uh I'd have to go through some of his movies and look. You know, he played regarding Henry. He played the Tard but didn't get the Academy. So you never go full Tard. <laughs> never go full Tard. <laughs> I don't think he got it for that. I'm pretty sure he didn't. All right. So I'm gonna. Tom Hanks, you look at Tom I'm gonna IMDb Harrison Ford oh. a little bit because I, I mean I know a lot of Harrison Ford movies. <laughs> let's let's. But I'm I'm not like some witness. Ugh. Uh, Kelly McGillis. Yeah. Um. What lies beneath? My wife likes that one. Michelle Pfeiffer. No, a there's flick. there's He's actually there's movie. actually one I'm specific. Now don't talk thinking. the Fugitive man. The Fugitive is fucking awesome. Oh god. <laughs> oh seriously. I <laughs> no, love the Fugitive. No, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna talk oh. Fugitive. What else? She's my wife. Indiana Jones 4? <clears throat> oh. Ooh. Yeah, you, know, you know how you make Harrison look good? <laughs> you put, put Shia, Shia LaBeouf up. next to him. <laughs> Harrison looks great. Oh, here's one I haven't seen. Cowboys and Aliens. I just, oh, that movie. Just, You're just right. That fa- movie is so bad. Plus, I've, I've never movie. seen it, but... Okay. It just... That movie has Indiana Jones and James Bond in it, and it still sucks. <laughs> that movie is the worst. Holy fuck, man. That's right up there with with Man of Steel and Star Trek Into Darkness as far as I'm concerned. It fucking blows. In fact, I'd say Star Trek Into Darkness is better than Cowboys vs. <laughs> it's way better. Uh, right. It's an interesting idea, though. Let's take a genre that was huge in, from like 1950-something, 1970-something. Right. And let's take a genre that was huge from 1980-something to 1990-something and mash them together and see what happens. It was an interesting experiment. It fucking failed, but it was an interesting experiment. Alright. I'll give you that. I was trying to think, but was there a worst Harrison? Sabrina? Worst Harrison. No, Sabrina's pretty good. Okay. It's all right. The Devil's Own. Oh, well, then there's all the uh, the Patriot Games one, the, the Jack Ryan ones. He's good in all those. He was Jack Ryan, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, him, Affleck, and what's his name, Kirk. Oh, my uh, God. What? Indiana Jones 5 announced what the fuck is going on. And what the, what the hell is going on? Right, that's it. We're done. <laughs> Closing it up. It's over. They could. They wouldn't let them make Back to the Future remake, so they're going to do a Indiana Jones five. Indiana Jones. I love that though. Zemeckis oh, is like, man. as long as I'm alive, motherfuckers, you are not going to make a Back to the Future remake. It's not going to happen. Well, at least it says the plot is unknown at this time. Is it going to be a five or is it going to be a reboot? I mean, they should no. reboot that. Five. Indiana Here's Jones five. Here's a good question. Who do you think could replace him? As Indiana Jones? As Indiana Jones. You mean Obviously not Shia LaBeouf. You mean it's still alive? No, no, no. Not as a continuation, but actually reboot it and start it over again. Sometimes it's good to reboot and start over. I get that. Who do you think could play Indy? We, we've we've had this discussion, and, and unfortunately we? the dude died. Which dude? River Phoenix. Well, okay, you're right. That's, that's, why, that's, why, that's why my first question is, that's still you're alive? Right. You're right. I mean, River good Phoenix point. was the perfect... He could have. Yeah. Could have. In fact... Heath could have done it too. Could have, would have, should, yeah. Heath, Heath yeah. could have done it. Heath could have, could have done it. I mean, look at Knight's Tale. Um, he totally could have done it. You know, and I don't. But I mean, now I, I, I haven't, I haven't watched a lot of it. But maybe one of the guys from Supernatural. I'm not sure which one. You know, from the TV show Supernatural. Maybe I don't know those guys very well, but I, I've seen a little bit, and they yeah. are, they are good. So far, the guy who's Captain Kirk, what's his name? Um, Chris Pine. Chris Pine. He's done Jack Ryan since then. He's yeah. kind of kind of stepped into a few roles that Harrison had. I would say Matt Damon, but I think he's a little too, too popular. <laughs> too popular, too short. Well, too short. Yeah. Although uh, Tom Cruise has been getting away with it for years. Uh, yeah. He's put him on a box. Who could? Okay, so well, you could pull that off. I think you need to redefine it because. 
You know, James Bond has been able to do that for fucking generations now. James Bond is has been able to reboot itself, and no one bitches about that. That's amazing. Because Art. because James Bond is is just a name. It's not a person. Where Indiana Jones is a person. He is Harrison Ford. Well, no, not Harrison Ford, but he gets older through the movies. There is a time continuance through all the... But the James Bonds ones do that too. It's just that they kind of later said Bond, they postulated that Bond is a rank or a title, not a person. Right. That was later. That was the Daniel Craig era. When no. They started no. That. If, if, you look, if you look back, it's not. It's really not. Who's um, your favorite Bond? Say what? Who's your favorite Bond? Again, I go, what it should have, could have? Should have been Pierce No, Brosnan. favorite one who played it. Yeah. Well, he she did play it. Pierce Brosnan did yeah. play it. So, who's your favorite that played it? Was it Pierce? I uh, I can't answer that question honestly because really? I in it's not that I have a favorite or not favorite. I don't think I've seen enough Bond films to make that decision. I've seen them all. See, I haven't. Yeah, I have not seen them all. I love of my favorite Sean Connery's Thunderball. Of my favorite Roger Moore's Octopussy. My favorite Timothy Dalton, eh, those are all the same. I don't really care. Right. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, Goldeneye. Oh, man, I love Goldeneye. But I love Die Another Day. I love all of the Pierce Brosnan ones. Then right after Pierce, it was Daniel, wasn't it? Yeah. Daniel Craig right after that? It, I yeah, because it went a long time between Pierce and... It did. It, there was a big gap there. Yeah. But my favorite is Pierce. I could watch all the Pierce ones in a row and love it. Love every single second of it. My opinion that is the closest to the original source material, Daniel Craig. Absolutely. I probably have not seen at least four of those movies that you just mentioned. If you're and, only... And that's, and that's that's kind of sad. Is If you're going to watch a movie that is closest and most interesting in modern times, Daniel Craig is definitely the best. But if you're going to watch, like you say, for what it is, a fun, I don't want to have to think about it, I just want to sit here and have a fucking blast, Pierce Brosnan. Absolutely. I think... He's the closest to Sean Connery. Sean Connery was the man. Sean Connery was the man because of the lines. I think with the Pierce Brosnan ones is that's when I tried yeah, to get. Look. Well, I tried to get into James Bond. I was like, finally Pierce Brosnan. I tried mm. to get into it, but it was nothing. There was no lines that were memorable. And that and and for for me, you know, because we quote movies, you have to have a memorable memorable line. You, know, you can quote Sean Connery. You're right. You can't really quote Pierce. And yeah, because he didn't have a lot of lines. It the was best just lines a lot of the Pierce movies are the villains. Well, even even the Pierce Brosnan movies, even yeah. you know, with Daniel Day, like can I? Nobody quotes lines from those movies. Mm, yeah, I think that's completely all across the board. You know, there's there's a few you know here and there, but I can quote movies from Clerks from Clerks. Okay, but that that's the point. That's where I'll make a side note here. One of the questions during the trivia contest we had today, when they first described the whole Chewbacca sings thing. Jay misunderstood, and so did I at first, where the only song we know with Chewbacca in it is Chewbacca from the Clerks soundtrack. (laughs) It's got to be on this. And you know what? Had those guys been true nerds, they totally would have thrown that in. Yeah. They fucking totally would have done it. (laughs) Da-da-da-da-da. We've been like, we've been the only fuckers who'd have known that. Yeah. That's fucking Chewbacca from the Clerks. And if they'd been really, I'm not saying that those guys did a really good job, but we were waiting for that. Because that is a nerd that is a nerd conglomeration right there. Mm-hmm. Clerks meets Star Wars. <laughs> but, of course, it was Chewbacca singing Like a Virgin and shit. I actually have that on my pot. On my so do pot. I. I listen to it, like, all the time. Chewbacca, Chewbacca. what a walking. <laughs> yeah, I love that song. Is that you, Chewie? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking great. That whole soundtrack kicks ass, It does. I, yeah. I love oh, it. my God. You know what? That's the thing about Clerks. I hear that song. As soon as he says... Yeah, I'll come in, click. Dun, and da, 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 yeah, or like... the coffee in the head. And, oh my god, that whole soundtrack is the fucking bomb for that movie. <laughs> they struck a lot oh, of man. fucking. Kevin, bombs. Kevin, you're my hero. You're my podcast <laughs> hero, man. Clerks yeah. is still the shit. It is. Don't let anybody ever fucking give you shit. And even he says that in his podcast. He's like, you know, I made Clerks once, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Clerks. And the other ones are great too. Mallrats, Dogma, Chasing Amy, they're all wonderful. But man, Clerks, holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go back to Scene for source. scene. Scene for fucking scene. The music, dude. the way it was shot. Can oh. you imagine? All right, think about cleaning up Clerks. You can't clean up Clerks. Fuck you. Yeah. Blasphemy. Exactly. You know, even, here's the funny part want... though. Even though Kevin, Kevin did go back and kind of do that a little bit. He did. When they play Clerks 10, 
uh, for the 10 year anniversary, they put in the animated scene of Randall knocking the coffin over, which I, I love both. I love watching it without it and watching mm-hmm. it with it because the scene is awesome. First off, the cartoon kicks ass. Right. The cartoon was really great. Yeah, and if, for them to bring the same animators in to do the cartoon. So, Clerks, if you don't know, they had, was there six or seven episodes of the cartoon? There, were, there was like half a season or yeah, something. Yeah, it was I've like six I've got the DVDs, seven. I have to look. And, they were and, great. All of them are great. Yeah, they're awesome. Oh my god. They're just... They fucking <laughs> the, referenced Temple of Doom. They like, did a whole like three episode arc about Temple of Doom and shit. It was fucking great. And Suzanne is in it. Oh. <laughs> Well, the Suzanne's not. Suzanne's the orangutan. It's the chimp. That's right. when they first got but, me. But what are you doing with a monkey? We're gonna teach, we're gonna teach the smoke. smoke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> is it safe? <laughs> I, mean, I still do that to people. Is it safe? <laughs> what? Is it safe? <laughs> yeah, that's the, fucking genius, the, dude. The Clerks cartoon was was awesome. Same with the the graphic novel, um, Chasing Dogma. Chasing Dogma. Yeah, I have um, that one. Yeah, that was pretty epic, too. That was narrative. I love that. That yeah. was pretty good. They had a lot of reference to the other movies in there. It was really awesome, which kind of became Jay and Pop Strike Back. But anyway, <laughs> we got we got Divergent. We got onto it. Divergent. Divergent. We're not talking about that shit. We can, because I'm on I've the third book. It. I've never you seen wa- it. You read those? Really? Okay, I've been on the third book for about nine now, months now. Been bitching about the movie. Nine, what's what's nine, the deal? I, I've only seen the first one. Yeah. The first movie. Is there a second? Uh, There's right. a second and possibly might have been a third or fourth. God, they are going to beat that. First, there's the superhero movies that are beating to death. Then they're going to beat the whole teeny bopper Twilight Well, yeah, it's, it's it's Hunger Games. It's Which, the first Hunger Games is excellent. It After took, that, eh. Okay. Divergent took a weird turn. And because of that weird turn. Like took, milk that curdled. It, it, took, a, it took another weird. All right. What? <laughs> like. And then okay. no logical person would think this way. Then then, then you got to remember that you're dealing with teenage girls. Oh. Like, oh, wait. Yeah. Teenage the girls. Me even <laughs> yeah. Teenage girls and menopause women. <laughs> and so I think that's the only reason why it's kind of kept my interest. But again, I've been reading the book for nine. And it doesn't take me nine months to read a book. No. I, usually I'm on, through them pretty fast. Yeah. I, I'm on month number nine I mean, for this book. You give me shit for reading Lord of the Rings all the time. Dude, that... Game of Thrones, you've been breezing through. Yeah, nine months to read this book, and I'm the the last one, and I'm I'm gonna make it. I promise you, I'm gonna make it. But I promise you, I probably will not go see the movies. I probably actually will. But I saw the first movie. It was even if I didn't read the book, it was still one of the worst movies I've ever seen because there's no there's a plot line, but there's no connectors. Like who's this dude? Well, doesn't matter. He's dead now. Well, why would he die? You have no idea. He okay. just died. Yeah, like I heard the, the same fuck? thing about Ender's Game, which I watched Ender's Game. Did you? I never um, watched it. Well, I, I caught it on TV. Well, like, I mean, it's got Harrison Ford and Ben Kingsley. How bad could it be? And I heard it was horrible. It was not great, but it wasn't horrible. Really? What's um, I said about Fantastic Four? Same thing. It wasn't great, but it wasn't horrible. Yeah, I I caught it on TV. Said, all right, it just now starting. I put the remote down and I didn't regret not watching it. It just it's very few films. Am I like God? I wish I had my two hours back. Yeah, there's um, a handful of them, but not that many. For you, it's Tusk. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. It was kind of like I love Tusk. To me, it was like the Last Starfighter. No, I can't say that because I've seen careful. The last, I've seen the Last Starfighter many times. Yeah, I, I wouldn't watch the Ender, <laughs> Ender's Game. All right, I could say I've seen it. And that was about it. Hmm. I don't know. I think I think the biggest problem is they could have done the way that they advertised it is you were expecting a little bit more, but you didn't. Well, that's exactly get it. Fantastic Four. Same thing. Um, exactly the same. The trailer was great. The film was disappointing. But at the same time, is <clears throat> I don't think they could have put more into it because I it was over two two hours long, if I remember right. Hmm. So it wasn't like they didn't leave anything out. It was more like. Maybe they put too much into it, or I'm not really sure. It, to me, it was it was good. I I would recommend watching it, hmm. but it's not going to be like one year. Like you know, I'm going to watch this a second time. It's speaking of which, have you seen the trailer for Crimson Peak yet? Yes, that looks fucking awesome. Yes, we are we are we're going to go see that. We're in planning. The yeah. Oh my god! I, first off, Guillermo del Toro, fucking great. <laughs> Hellboy, Pan's Labyrinth, awesome. Really great. 
and uh, you know I've been looking for another Halloween film I've been looking for another film to watch every year for Halloween and so far I've been pretty disappointed with most things I mean I still go back and watch 13 Ghosts and I still go mm-hmm. back and watch Nightmare Before Christmas because those are my favorite like kind of movies 13 Ghosts really 13 Ghosts man fuck you man really? I love that movie Matthew Lillard is in that fucking Monk is in that movie yeah fuck that movie's awesome 13 Ghosts wow. I love that flick do you remember it? Have you seen, when's the last I time do. you saw it? Oh, it's it's been quite a few years. Oh man, fucking cutaways and the whole glass house and shit <sighs> and the fucking steampunk fucking gears. I remember laughing during it, which means it's a great horror movie because that's all I do is laugh at horror movies. Well, see, I'm, I didn't I'm, find it particularly scary. Yeah, but I'm just I love screwing it. the head it, that way. It, well, for me, Cabin in the Woods. I love Cabin in the Woods. Right. Have you seen that yet? No, maybe. Dude, not sure. Dude, Cabin in the Wait, Woods. You'd laugh at that ca- one. Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods is about four. The guy who plays Thor and a bunch of kids, you know, they go up to a cabin and they're like, gonna fuck, you know, it's the whole Evil Dead setup. Right. And then shit starts going wrong. They pick up an artifact and fucking, and then you find out later it's a bunch of guys manipulating them so they can protect against the end of the world. If you if you watch Buffy and Angel, it kind of makes sense. No, it's not the one I'm thinking of. No, it's not. It turns out it's a bunch of guys on monitors watching these kids get fucked up and they're betting on them and the whole thing is to like save the world. It really is. And the kids fight back. It's just, I can't even describe it. There's okay. no way. If you're a Joss Whedon fan, you get it. If you ever watch Buffy and Angel, which you never have, you'd get it. But it's kind of different. So I'm going to get that and you're going to watch it. You're going to like that. Yeah. You're going to laugh your ass off at that movie. <sighs> well, we got an hour in. Time for break? Yeah, well, time for break. Because I think I know what we want to go to next. All right. Coming well, up next, me, what's on our Facebook page? Oh, yeah. Here we go. These morons can be reached on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and at rumrounds at outlook.com. All copyrighted materials are used for review and discussion purposes only. No copyright infringement is intended by members of the Rum Rants podcast or Sterling Broadcasting. Thank you.